Hi everyone, it's Mr. H here. This video is all about simplifying algebraic expressions using exponent laws. We're going to work through the four examples you see on the screen in front of you. Timestamps are below the video. And we're going to first look at what the exponent laws are and then how they would apply to those four examples. Before we go over those four examples, I want to quickly review what the exponent laws are. The first one is the product rule. It says that something to some power multiplied by the same base to another power is equal to the sum of those two powers. And so if I have x to the third and x to the seventh, we add the powers together or the exponents together and we get x to the power of 10. What about the quotient rule? Well, that's the next one here. And that says that if I have, let's say, x to the power of 7 and I'm dividing by the same base to another power, then I subtract those exponents. So in this case, it's 7 minus 3, x to the power of 4. That could also be written out like this. It doesn't have to be written with a division sign like that. It could be written with like a fraction looking way. And so in that case, it would be x to the 7 minus 3 as well x to the power of 4. So both of those represent the exact same thing. The next one is a power of a power rule. And so a couple of examples of that, just so we see this both with the product rule at play and with the quotient rule at play, is the first one will be this. Let's write out 2x to the power of 2 all to the power of 3. The power of a power rule says that this 3 gets multiplied in times whatever powers are in the brackets. However, there's also a power on the 2, and that's a power of 1. And so we need to remember to multiply the 1 times 3 and the 2 times 3. So this becomes 2 to the power of 1 times 3 times x to the power of 2 times 3. This step, again, isn't needed to be written when we go and solve things, but just for the sake of right now, I've written it out. This becomes 2 to the power of 3 times x to the power of 6. And we could take that one step further, which we could write as 8 times x to the 6. And the reason it's 8 is because 2 to the power of 3 is 2 times 2, and then that's 4 times 2 again gives you 8. A second example would be something like this, x squared over y to the power of 3. If we take all that and we put it to the power of 4, then that would be equal to x to the power of 2 times 4 divided by y to the power of 3 times 4. So we've multiplied the 4 times the 2, we multiply the 4 times the 3 on the bottom, and we get x to the power of 8 over y to the power of 12. And we can't simplify that any further than that. What about the power of 0? The power of 0 is anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. I could have uh, x to the power of 3, y to the power of 2, and z all to the power of 0. It's still going to be equal to 1. Any entire thing to the power of 0 is 1. Now, in this case, the reason this whole thing is 0, because you might think this is the power of a power rule, is because if we take all these exponents and they multiply all these exponents by 0, 3 times 0 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0. So it's essentially 1 times 1 times 1, because every single one of those exponents becomes to the power of 0. And so that's how you get just 1. Negative exponents is the next one, and that says that if I have something to a negative power, then it becomes 1 over that to a positive power. Likewise, if I have 1 over x to the power of negative n, that would become uh, the reciprocal of that, which would be x to the power of positive n. Um, and the reason for that, if you really wanted to, to see why that was the case, which we always should want to do that, uh, 1 over x to the power of negative n is equal to 1 over 1 over x to the n. And that's 1 divided by 1 over x to the n, which is 1 times x to the n over 1. And then you just get x to the power of n. So that's the reason why those negative exponents in this case work. The last one is fractional exponents. And so if I have x to the power of m over n, that's going to be equal to the nth root of x to the m. Or the other way we sometimes want to represent it is the nth root of x to the power of m. So let's just do a quick example before we get into the big examples about this. Let's say I had the 900th, x to the power of 900, and I'm going to take the 300th root of that. This is actually the case where we're going to do this in reverse. 
rather than going in this direction like we're doing with most of the other ones, we're actually going to go in this direction. And so we're going to take the root and we're going to write that as an exponent. So this becomes x to the power of 900 over 300. Well, 900 over 300, that's just 3. So that is equal to x to the power of 3. So that's how we're going to use that in the situations that we look at. So on to the first of the four examples. Here we go. We're going to see where these different rules come up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to recognize that we have the power of a power rule playing out here. So we're going to multiply the outside exponent times the exponent times the exponent in the bracket. So this becomes x to the power of 6 times negative a half. And so I'm just going to write it out first as negative 6 over 2, though we know it's going to be x to the negative 3. And then 9 times a third. So this is x, and this is going to give me 9 over 3. So this is going to be x to the power of positive 3. So what we've applied here to get to this step is we've applied the power of a power rule. The power of a power rule. And now what we're going to do is we are going to apply the product rule. Because we know that if they have the same base, then I can add the exponents together. So that's negative 3 plus 3, which gives me an exponent of 0. Well, now that the exponent becomes 0, this is a uh, power of 0. And so if something is a power of 0, we know that that is equal to 1. Now, there's a couple of steps I've shown here that aren't necessary to show this one and this one. Uh, so it would be expected that you would show the step that I've circled there and then your final answer and your fact that it's x to the power of 0. And that's all you have to do. But there are three rules that have all come into play in just that first example. On to the second example. The question here said simplify that expression, but we're going to add a little thing to that here. We're going to say evaluate that for a equals 11 and b equals 10. We're going to do that by first simplifying it before we sub those numbers in. A few things to keep in mind are written at the side. We want to apply laws on the inside terms first and the outside terms last. We want to apply the negative exponents only at the end. And the reason for that is you might flip something to have to have it flipped again. So if we apply them at the end, we'll only have to flip things once if necessary. And then we want to simplify before substituting. So here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the inside first. So I'm applying this negative 1 to the two terms in the brackets there. So I'm going to go 25 to the power of negative 1 and a to the power of negative 4. That's going to be in the numerator. In the denominator, I have to recognize that there's an exponent of 1 on both the 7 and the b. And so I'm going to have 7 to the power of 1 times 2. That's going to give me 7 to the power of 2. a to the power of 2 times negative 2. That's going to give me negative 4. And b to the power of 1 times 2. That's going to give me a power of 2. All of that is to the power of a half. So now what we're going to do, that was the power of a power rule, we're now applying the quotient rule. The way we're applying the quotient rule here is we're saying, okay, if I have a to the negative 4 and I subtract, because they have the same base, if I subtract negative 4 from that, I get a to the power of 0, which is equal to 1. And that's why if something is above the same thing below, that's why they cancel out and leave you with 1. That's the quotient rule really in disguise. So now what we're going to do, that we've simplified everything in the inside, is we're going to apply the power of a power rule again with that 1 half times all the exponents inside the bracket. So I'm going to go 25 to the power of negative 1 half. And then on the bottom, I'm going to have 7 to the power of 2 times a half. That just gives me 1. And b to the power of 2 times a half, that gives me b to the power of 1 as well. And so now what I can do is I can apply finally the negative exponent at the end. So this becomes 1 over 25 to the power of 1 half. And then we have a 7 down here, and we have a b on the denominator. And so the reason that a 1 stays up there is anytime you bring something to the opposite side, whether it's from the numerator down to the denominator or the denominator up to the numerator, that factor of 1 still is there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, the square root of 25. So 1 over the square root of 25, right? That's that's We don't typically write the 2 there when we write a square root, but remember it's the, the exponent law that we looked at earlier, the numerator of the exponent is written with the 25 and the denominator is written out in front of the radical sign. So this is the square root of 25. We know that's 5. And so this becomes equal to 1 over 5 times 7. And now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in b 
You'll notice I didn't even have to substitute an A because it canceled out up above. So we're going to substitute B equals 10. So we get 5 times 7 times 10 on the denominator. And this becomes 1 over 5 times 7 is 35 times 10 is 350. And that is our final answer for that. Now, some of you might be inclined to try to put the 11 and 10 in right away, but it's going to just mean you have to write more out and uh, it would be easier, especially if I gave you numbers like 1,110 um, or something like that, then it would be a lot simpler to write just with the letters and simplify it and substitute only in when needed. Example three, this one is back to simplifying. So we're just going to simplify this using the exponent rules. So working inside to outside. So the first thing I want to do is I want to apply my power of a power rule. And that's being applied in the two situations that I've shown you there. Don't forget to apply it when we have an exponent of 1 as well. So this becomes x to the power of negative 3, y to the power of negative 1. And then we don't have any power of a power rule yet being applied to the second bracket in the numerator. So this becomes x to the 4, y to the 3. It stays the same. And then in the denominator, we just get 2 to the power of negative 2. That's the most common mistake people make is they forget to take those whole numbers and do the power of a power rule to those. So hopefully you don't get caught doing that. So now 2 times negative 2 gives me x to the power of negative 4. And negative 2 times negative 3 gives me y to the power of positive 6. Now this is all raised to the power of negative 1. And so what we're going to do now, we've applied the power of a power rule. Now we're going to apply the product rule. And so we apply the product rule. And so that means I'm going to do that just to the numerator first here. So I'm going to get in the numerator negative 3 plus 4. So I'm going to go x to the power of negative 3. I'm going to add 4 to that. That's going to give me x to the power of 1. So that's just x. And I'm also going to apply it with the y. So I'm going to get y to the negative 1. If I add 3 to that, I get y to the power of 2. And so x times y to the power of 2 divided by 2 to the power of negative 2. x to the power of negative 4, y to the power of 6. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the quotient rule. And so how we're going to apply the quotient rule here is we're going to say I have x to the power of 1. I'm going to subtract from that negative 4. That's going to give me x to the power of 1 plus 4, which is 5. And then I have y to the power of 2. I'm going to subtract from 2, 6 on the denominator, and I get y to the power of negative 4. And so applying the quotient rule here gives me this. I'm left with x to the power of 5, y to the power of negative 4, all over that 2 to the power of negative 2 is still there. And now we've simplified everything in the brackets. And so now we're going to apply that negative 1 outside the brackets. And we get that with the power of a power rule applying to all three exponents inside. So we get x to the power of negative 5. We get y to the power of positive 4, negative 1, 4 times negative 1. And we get 2 to the power of positive 2. Aren't you glad we didn't flip things along the way or we would have been flipping over and over and over again. So the very last step here is just to apply the fact that x to the power of negative 5 is equal to 1 over x to the 5. And so as we apply that, we get y to the 4th is the only thing staying in the numerator. 2 squared is 4. And then we have this x to the 5th down there as well. That's your final answer for that third example. On to example 4, which looks a little different than the other ones we've looked at. The key with this is that we're going to have to work with fractional exponents. So remember that x to the power of n over m is the mth root of x to the n, or it's the mth root of x all to the power of n. And so we'll see where that comes in handy here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change this. I want to go this direction. I want to write it out so everything's a fraction, so I can simplify some things. So what this means is that this means it's x to the power of 6n times x to the power of 3n plus 9. And then all of that is to the power of 1 third. All of that is to the power of 1 third. And on the denominator, what that means is that this is x to the power of 2n plus 2. All of that is to the power of 1 half. Remember, if there's no number in front of the radical sign, there's like a 2 there. Now you might question me and say, well, Mr. Hamilton, how did you get from there? Uh, it's supposed to be together. Well, we're going to add them together in a moment, or join them together, rather, in a, in a moment. But just note here that the other way we could write this is if we were kind of going 
a bit longer route through this, is we could say this is x to the power of n to the power of 1 over m. And then when you multiply n times 1 over m, that's how you get to the n over m. So we're doing this kind of intermediate step as we go along, and that's what we've done by taking the 1 third and the half. So now what we want to do is we want to apply the power of a power rule, in a sense, to multiply this out. So we're going to apply that 1 third times the 6n, and we're going to apply the 1 third times 3n plus 9, that entire 3n plus 9. And then we're going to apply the 1 half times the t entire 2 times n plus 2. So let's look at what happens here. This becomes x to the power of 6n over 3, and then this becomes x to the power of 3n plus 9 over 3, and then in the denominator this becomes x to the power of 2 n plus 2 all over 2 as we've applied that power of a power rule. Now some of you might want to take the half and multiply it both into the brackets on the denominator into those terms and into the 2 but remember that if you did that you'd actually be multiplying by a half twice. We only want to multiply by one factor of a half and so that is actually very nicely going to cancel out with a factor of 2 in the denominator. So I'm actually going to write that out first. This is going to become x to the n plus 2. And then in the numerator, we get x to the power of 6n over 3. That becomes 2n. And then this 3n plus 9, that seems a little tricky to divide. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take out a factor of 3. I'm going to write this out as n plus 3. And then that's over 3. And so just like we did in the denominator, that 3 in the denominator is going to cancel out with a 3 in the numerator of that exponent. So this becomes x to the power of 2n, x to the power of n plus 3, divided by x to the power of n plus 2. All right, so we've gotten pretty far, but we can still simplify this further. Let's now apply the product rule. If we apply the product rule, that means we're going to go x to the power of 2n, and we're going to add n plus 3 to it. And then we're still going to be dividing by x to the power of n plus 2. So let's continue that right here. So this becomes x to the power of 3n plus 3 over x to the power of n plus 2. And so now we're going to apply the quotient rule. So we're going to go x to the power of 3n plus 3. And then we're going to subtract from that. And it's important we subtract the entire exponent here. So I'm going to put it in brackets, n plus 2, right? The reason I didn't put it in brackets earlier is because we were adding it. So that didn't matter. But now that we're subtracting it, we do have to make sure that we've subtracted the entire exponent. So this gives me x to the power of 3n plus 3 minus n minus 2. We add like terms together, the 3n and the negative n. So that gives me x to the power of 2n. And then we add the like terms together of positive 3 and negative 2. That gives me plus 1. And that's all you can do. That's your final answer. Until you're given some numbers for either n or x, you can't do anything further. So that's as simple as you can get with that example. I hope those are helpful. If, if they were, please like and subscribe, and feel free to follow along with more vid videos.